It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Tibbetts Physics. What is crappening? Today, we are going to solve two projectile motion problems, one for regions physics and one for college physics. Our first problem is a bullet is fired from a gun with an initial velocity of 100 meters per second. If the angle of the launch was 30 degrees, find everything. Okay, we got the question. So, let's draw a vector diagram first. A bullet is fired with an initial velocity, let's just call it vi, equals 100 meters per second. And we know the angle is 30 degrees. Sorry about that. Sorry again. So let's make our vx or vix component and our viy components and fix it so they're the same lengths. Vix and our viy. Close enough. And the angle we're given is 30 degrees. When it says find everything, we can find the maximum height, the total time of flight, the final vertical velocity, the final horizontal velocity, and also how far it went, so the horizontal distance. Let's make our chart first that has V, I, V, F, A, D, and T. If you just copy and paste it, let me move it up a little bit. And we want to have an option for while it's going up. So from the bottom to the top, that's going up. And while it's going down from the top to the bottom, as well as the total flight. The things that we know automatically are the acceleration due to gravity. While it's going up, that's negative 9.81 meters per second squared. We already have the units, so we don't have to rewrite them. While it's going down, it's also negative 9.81 meters per second squared. We know that the final velocity at the top, this is all for vertical motion, sorry, at the highest point the final velocity is 0 meters per second. While it's going down, the initial velocity at the very top of its path is also 0 meters per second. From here we can find every other box um, minus the total VI and the total VF. So why don't we find our vertical and horizontal initial velocity components first. Step one will be, let's solve for VIY. VIY is equal to V sub I sine of theta. VIY equals, I'm not sure why it's doing that, 100 meters per second, tilt this a little bit, 100 meters per second times a sine of 30 degrees. Plug and check and we get VIY to equal 50 meters per second. We could plug this into our chart. The initial velocity while it's going up is 50 meters per second. While it's going down, when you catch the right before the bullet lands on the ground, its final vertical velocity would be negative 50 meters per second. While we're at it, why don't we also calculate VIX? So VIX equals VI cosine of theta this time. 
Vix equals 100 meters per second times the cosine of 30 degrees. And that gives us 86.6 .6 meters per second. We'll use that later on when we solve for how far it went. Let's go back to our charts. Our missing boxes are the height, the maximum height, so how high did it go, how far did it fall, and the total distance traveled. Also the time to go from the bottom to the top, the time from the top to the bottom, and the total time of flight. Why don't we calculate the maximum height? So number step two, we have to use vertical motion in the vertical aspect to calculate the maximum height. We know the initial velocity, the final velocity, acceleration due to gravity, and we want to find d. The formula that has all these is vf squared equals vi squared plus 2ad. Again, these are all our vertical motion velocities, accelerations, and distances. Let's isolate the maximum height. We know that while it's going up, the final velocity is zero, so we just have to get d by itself. Subtract vi squared and divide by two times the acceleration due to gravity. So from here, we just plug and check negative, plug and check, sorry, negative, parentheses, 50 meters per second quantity squared all over two times negative 9.81 meters per second squared. We put this in our calculators and we get a maximum height to be, or not to be, 127.4 meters. So that's how high that bullet went. And we can plug it in, 127.4. If it went up 127.4, and if it starts from the ground and lands on the ground, it'll go down 127.4 meters. To get the total distance it traveled up and down, we just have to add those up, and we get 254.8 meters. All right, let's now find the time of flight, so step three. Again, we're using vertical motion. Let's not use the distance in case we have to find the time without the distance. So let's go back to 50 meters per second, VI, VF, and A, and we're finding T. We could just use the formula VF equals VI plus AT. While it's going up, the final velocity at the top is still zero. Isolate T by subtracting I and divided by the acceleration due to gravity. Negative 50 meters per second over negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Plug and chug and we get a time of 5.1 seconds. That's the time to go up from the bottom to the top. From the top to the bottom is 5.1 which means our total is 10.2 seconds. Last thing that we can find, oops, sorry. The last thing that we could find is how far, let's get rid of that really quick. The last thing that we could find is how far did the oval in the horizontal direction. In the horizontal direction, it's moving at a constant velocity when we neglect air resistance, which means the only formula we could use is the velocity equals distance over time. Let's, and that's V sub X. So if we isolate distance, we get D equals V sub X times T. Because it's a constant velocity, V I X, which is 86.6 .6 meters per second, is equal to our Vx throughout the entire process. 86.6 .6 meters per second. We now know the total time of flight to be 10.2 seconds. We can plug that in. 
And in our calculators, we get a horizontal distance to be 883.3 meters. The next problem we're going to look at is from your college textbook in Chapter 3. This is number 58. A 2.00 meter tall basketball player is standing on the floor 10 meters from the basketball from the basket. If he shoots the ball at a 40 degree angle with a horizontal, at what initial speed must he throw the basketball so that it goes through the hoop without striking the backboard? The height of the basket is 3.05 meters. What I'm going to do first is just sketch it so you can see what the picture looks like in case you don't have your textbook opened. We have a basketball, basketball player that's 2 meters tall. They're standing 10 meters away from the basketball hoop. And the hoop is 3.05 meters. The basketball goes from the player who's 2 meters tall into the hoop at 3.05 meters. What we care about for the vertical distance is how high did the ball travel? Or sorry, yeah. Compared to where did it start to where did it end? And that change in height from the beginning to the end is 3.05 meters. So in this case, it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom of where it started from. It's up a little bit by 1.05 meters. Sorry, 1.05. So let's draw a vector diagram next. The basketball is thrown at some initial velocity, which at an angle of 40 degrees, so there's both vertical and horizontal components. It should be VIX and VIY. And the angle, we're told, is 40.0 degrees. Big points here. Yep. This is all the information we're given in the problem, and what we want to find is the green vector VI. Let's make our chart first that we've been using to solve projectiles. This is for just vertical motion. VI meters per second, VF meters per second, acceleration, oops, meters per second squared. Sorry, my hands are numb. It's cold outside. Um, D in meters, and time in seconds. All we care about in this scenario is in terms of what path we're looking at is when it goes from the person's hand to the height of the hoop. We don't care about it going from the person's hand to the top of the path or from the top to the bottom. So we're just going from the person to the hoop. And sorry, my hands are sticky, I think, from my apple. It's constantly moving the screen downwards. So we're going from the person to In this scenario, there's a few things we know. The acceleration there on Earth is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. We know the distance, how high it is above the person's hand, is 1.05 meters. We don't know the initial velocity. We don't know the final velocity. And we don't know the time. These are all the vertical motion. Let's look at horizontal motion. We know the horizontal distance, let's call it d sub x, is 10.0 meters. We can calculate vix in terms of vi, because we know the angle. And we also know that the time horizontal is the same as the vertical time. So the time it takes to travel 10 meters horizontally is the same time it takes the ball to go up and into the hoop. What we need to do for this problem 
is start with horizontal motion and solve for vi in terms of vix. Horizontally, we know that vx is equal to d is equal to d over t. And we know that the horizontal distance, we could say, is 10 meters. And we also know that Vix is equal to V sub i cosine of theta. Because we know the times are the same, both horizontal and vertical, let's isolate the t. That would give us t equals d sub x over v sub x. And we know that v sub x is equal to vi cosine of theta. That leaves us with t equals d sub x, which we know is 10 meters, over vi cosine of theta. We could plug that t into our vertical chart. So the time is d sub x over vi cosine of theta. We also know that the vi from our vector diagram, viy, sorry, that's our vertical chart, is equal to vi sine of theta. So let's just pretend that we know what it is for the time being. We know vi, we know, kind of know vi, we have a formula for it. We know a, d, and we have a formula for t. What we can do is look up a formula that has these four variables, and since we have two vi's, that's our one unknown, we could solve for v sub i. And we know dx is 10 meters, we can plug it in later. The formula that works for that is d equals vit plus one half a t squared. This is our vertical motion, so I'm just going to put d sub y is v i y, and then t is the same, so it doesn't matter. T we or sorry, d sub y we know, v i y. Let's plug that in. So d sub y is equal to v i sine of theta times the time, which we have is d x over v i cosine of theta. Let's just plug that in d sub x over v sub i cosine theta plus one half a we know what it is let's just keep it as a for now times the time again except this time squared d sub x over v sub i cosine of theta quantity squared if we look at uh, the left side of the equation, the left part of the equation, we have a sine of theta over a cosine of theta. That gives us a tangent of theta, so it simplifies it a little bit. We have a v sub i over v sub i. Those will cancel out. That simplifies things. And we know d sub x is 10. So let's just write d sub y is equal to d sub x times the tangent of theta. Again, the vi's canceled out. Sine over cosine equals tangent. Plus one half a, and then we have to square everything on inside the parentheses. So d sub x squared over v sub i squared cosine squared theta. From here, <clears throat> um, the only thing that we don't know is v sub i. So we could isolate that. What I'm going to do is plug in my numbers because I think it'll be a little bit easier to solve for. And then we'll solve for v sub i. That leaves us, leaves us with 1.05 meters equals 10 meters times a tangent of 40 degrees. Plus 1 half times negative 9.81 meters per second squared just the units, times 10 meters squared, all over vi squared, times a cosine 
of 40.0 degrees. I'm just going to pause this really quick. Well, I'll do it in front of you. So let's do the math uh, for the equation, and eventually let's have something times over vi squared. Make sure I calcul calculate some degrees. So 10 times the tangent of 40 gives us 8.391. 1.05 meters equals 8. I'll say 8.4 meters plus one half times negative 9.1 times 10 squared divided by, forgot to square the cosine, cosine of 40 degrees squared. That's going to give us negative, so minus, 835 point nine all over vi squared. I'm going to subtract the 8.4 from the other side. 1.05 minus 8.4 gives us negative 7.35. equals 835.9 all over vi squared. So we'll multiply both sides by vi squared, divide by 7.35, got the negative, sorry, divide by 7.35 and square root it. So negative 835.9 divided by negative 7.35, square root it, and we get a velocity, initial velocity, be 10.7 meters per second. Notice this problem had a lot of algebra where we had to set up things beforehand. The one trick for this, we could say, is because we had no information in the vertical direction to solve for vi immediately, we went to look in the horizontal direction to see what we knew and because the times are the same, we can plug that formula in for t sub i. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you next time. See ya!